So welcome to part two of our apocalypse committee and uh, things can change in an instant. Things can no longer be what you thought they were going to be in the apocalypse. Sometimes you got to turn into another character. Sometimes you got to show the world another aspect of yourself. And sometimes you don't want to kind of go along with the way the world sees you. And so we're part of the new paradigm. We're part of a new world. We're part of a something that looks a little bit different to the people in the old paradigm. And I'm just wondering what you guys think about the shift that's happening on the planet right now between the movement from the old paradigm into the movement into the new paradigm. Well, there's a lot of, um, I'm at my parents' house right now and they watch the news a lot. So CNN is always on upstairs. And so I'm listening to what's happening in the States based on the media. And there's kind of like a war a little bit between the president and the government and the media, which is really interesting to see. Like the media, like the news anchors come on and they're basically like, what the hell is going on with this guy? And the president's like, I really don't like, like what the hell's like, the media is evil and they're out to get me. It's really interesting dynamics. Um, but it's interesting to see the perspectives of everybody saying, when can we get back to normal? And, and then there's this like kind of hopelessness that falls and people are looking at that and say, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so long, so long before we can get back to normal. And from my perspective, it's like, like I don't, I'm not getting back to normal. I'm creating a new normal. I'm creating a norm for my life that's, that's completely different. It, how I govern myself, how, how economics works for me is going to be very, very different. And I'm taking this time to develop that. And I know Captain Swift is too with, um, with the groups and hosting discussions about how we can create a new economy for ourselves. And it's like, this is a beautiful opportunity to forge something new. And it's like, the government is like so caught up to tr in, rest in trying to restore. And they're looking at how could we restore? Well, it would take so long, like two years to restore. And I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't take two years for the community to have all this time to get together to figure out a new way of operating. And that new way of operating can really honor your dreams and the people that you love and the experiences that you want to create. And this is a beautiful opportunity to really explore what is it that we want to experience in life and create that together. But it really feels like the, the authority is now in the hands of the people, in the hands of our communities, um, because it's us that have the power to create something new. And the government is preoccupied now with trying to restore things and restoring just is not a, a valid option right now. And why would you even want to restore? It wasn't, it wasn't a very good system. It sure as hell didn't work for me, how economy was structured. Um, so I, I'm all for creating a, uh, like a, a, a new system, brand new system that really is much more heart centered and and really honors all the people in our community and doesn't have this idea that you need to sell something to create value or to to offer value to the world you don't have to like love is value and if we experience that if we if we agree to like have that be the currency love then we can create a, a brand new world that's based on that instead of money it makes a lot of sense and we have a beautiful opportunity right now. No. <clears throat> well, I just think it's pretty silly. Uh, <laughs> restoring it back to normal. Let's, restore it back to the war driven normal are you guys all on board i really had fun with all my tools with all my tools of mass destruction 
Yeah. Hmm. Linear thinking. I was in a pod yesterday with two other women and we were talking about like the, uh, the idea that you had to be like, had to focus on one thing. And everybody was like, yeah, but I'm like multi. What did she call it? I can't remember it, it, it but it was like, we're multifaceted. And we were like thinking about like being women and like tribal women and it being like, being multifaceted is just like the way, way of, of being, of like raising a child, of talking about psychology while you're in a river like washing up your 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 clothes for the tribe or like picking berries like and saying like way back and uh this idea that like we have to go back to normal which is very linear focused narrow kind of way of being which is like like not looking at all these obvious signs from nature um, that it's not working. We're like, no, no, this is the way we go, guys. Come on, troops. <laughs> you got Sandwich Clown over here, just uh, bringing up a little uh, trickster vibes, just throwing in this little feminist bomb here, like, do, do you feel that? Does it feel good? Does it feel passionate? Can we ride that? Can we keep going? Can we keep going? Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. What am I doing now? I don't even know. I don't even know where to go because I lost my heart. I lost my soft sides. All oh, those little birds that don't hear them. Now I hear them. Oh, maybe that's all right. Maybe I can just stay inside and figure out what the fuck is going on because I forgot about my mother. Forgot about my mother, my mother earth, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be crazy, but there's a lot of truth. Yeah, that was, that was really weird, but uh, I got my clown hat on, so I think it's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. I really want like um to bring in the respect of like the indigenous people and women and the planet Earth. Yeah, we should be listening to that. And I think that that's been coming up for me by being like all these people on these zoom meetings having these breakthroughs because I'm bringing them back to their bodies and into nature and their softness and then people being like oh my god I'm having breakthroughs and then I'm like seen and I'm just like really really do I have something to give do I really have something to give because so many guys have been so scared of what I have to give because it scares them and I'm just like Fuck you. You should listen because I see you clearly. And so, yeah, uh, is really like getting in touch with our, with our feminine side and our processing of emotions and letting it all flow and then coming to this new reality where we can really honor ourselves and honor others and be humble and be multifaceted, be like what you were saying, Jordan, and Elijah, at one point, like, um, is that we can enjoy all the areas of our lives. We don't have to be like back to normal. Let's go back to our jobs. We're slaving away because that's what we know. We can be like, hey, my job is actually healing other people. My job is like creativity. And that expansion and that softness and that femininity is going to be back to where we were for thousands of years, but with technology now. It's like now I can get these technologies to go and like water my plants. And then I can also say hi to my little babies too. And like, I can go and have a jam and I can go and help other people see their beautiful hearts and, and, uh, 
yeah, like we can grow our own food. We can create art together. We can tell the truth. <laughs> And not be persecuted, not be burnt at the fucking stake. What a concept. What a concept. I there's a there was a meme that I was reading that was showing the position of all these oil tankers that are not moving on the planet. I don't know if you saw that. But all across the world right now, oil has kind of stopped because the production has gone into the containers, whether it's moving or not, and everything's full. The price vomited out and because people aren't moving around, people aren't spending money in the same way. Like this is this background to what's going on. And then if you look in the financial markets and the relationship between let's say the cryptocurrencies and the funny money and the, the background of what's happening in, in in there and then looking at the food supply where again because of logistics because of the uh what's occurring the restaurants aren't open the the, the food isn't moving and there's a lot of food that needs to get destroyed in the background again there are these things occurring which are at some point have to have a larger effect and it's, it's, it's like this, this, the world is about to implode and there's a sort of, I, I think, a design behind that, let's say by the dark forces, let's say, but essentially it's, it's the death of what's occurring and then, you know, the phoenix rising out, it, it's, it's like it is going to force all humans to really examine their life, examine how they live their life, examine how they come together in community. And I think what you're saying, you know, in terms of going to the indigenous people and going to the, the feminine, that it, they hold the truth. They hold the truth in how we are supposed to live in alignment with Mother Earth. And there's been a patriarchy for, let's say, I think it's 13,000 years. I think there's like a 26,000 year cycle. And what happens, there's a polarity shift. And uh, I think John Balaho Melchizedek wrote a book can't remember the name, but he said that the spiritual center of the planet used to be in Tibet. And that when the Chinese moved in, it was kind of beginning to move across the planet and the spiritual center was moving and it, it was heading towards Chile. And at the northern part, yeah. what's that? Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, I remember it, hearing about this. In, in the northern part of Chile, there's a new kind of like, let's say spiritual hierarchy being created, but it's feminine. And it's yeah, led, yeah. By, led by women and that, you know, we're going through this huge polarity shift that, you know, from Pisces into Aquarius. And as we move from Pisces into Aquarius, we're moving from that patriarch in, into the matriarch. We're moving from the male leading to the female leading. And so I think that's what we were experiencing. And I think one of the first times I saw that was in Alien, when I saw in the movies the first time seeing Signori, Signori Weaver be a hero to be the one who beat the alien and it was a woman. And I'm sure you know, there's been different things before that, but for me watching movies, you know, for all my life, the heroes were the men, the women were terrified in the background and whenever there was a fight or something, you, you know, the, the women just seemed to be kind of in the background, couldn't do anything. And now every hero is a woman <laughs> and those women kick ass. And I mean, I, I, I don't know how much I support the whole violent thing around being a hero, but it just shows that the mentality in our media, in our movies, has, has absolutely changed in regards to how we assess women. And uh, I, I think that part of, again, within this destruction is this creation and that there is this uh, movement on the planet, which may or may not be understood by most people, but we are going through a major transformation from this old paradigm or the civilization wave and the industrial wave and moving into this unity consciousness that is kind of like a scientific fact. It's not a maybe, it's not, oh, I hope so. I mean, there's also this underlying kind of we're in the Kali Yuga age, which is sort of like a dark age in general. And, uh, but I, I just, I feel as if there's some experiment happening on this planet that has never occurred before. And that there's a lot of beings that were born into this time now 
and we're all here to help with these sort of assistance to move the species into a more loving place and to escape this dark cabal or force that has kind of, I think, sort of been against galactic law and acting like a parasitical nature and feeding off the negative emotions of humans and creating horrible situations and that we are now leaving that and that people like ourselves are sort of pioneers or way showers along with all across the planet, other ones who have the good of the species in their heart. And um, I think that that's sort of like the hope or the light at the end of the rainbow or whatever you want to call it, that sometimes when you look, it just seems like, how can we change this? This is just horrible. There's no way out of this. But in fact, it is written almost in law that we are getting out of this. And, you know, it's kind of like this, the, it's got to get bad before it gets better. And you just have to keep the end mind in, in, in your vision of knowing that we are going to create a, a much better world for everybody. <laughs> yeah, um, Elizabeth Barber wrote a book called Waking the Global Heart. And she looked at our history as like having um, a lens of masculine and feminine energy and also looking at it like a development of a child. And so she said that it wasn't necessarily that this is like have an evil, it's like a stage in evolution. Like in the 60s was like when we were teenagers, coming from kids, coming from functionalism through the religion and through the church into like hyper individualism. And now I think we've mentioned this in other talks, but like we're coming into collective individualism coming into adulthood, like reflecting on how did my right in my property <laughs> as men, actually, most of the time, I, I have a right to vote. I have a right for my property, but that is very individualistic in the, you know, the, the, um, uh, the declaration of independence from like the French revolution and then the American revolution from which our laws been come from was more like from property based and individual based mm -hmm. and now it's like well what about all these externalities these are the externalities is like our mother earth or our lover earth some people say like let's just like pollute the rivers and just call it a necessary cost because of my individual gain as in I want a lot of money and I want to be able to get more property so that's like coming back and like clearing up all this gunk in our systems and like in a micro sense in a macro sense so that we can be more responsible adults as a collective as in like I can have things that I want for myself but within that action within that thought I need to think about how I'm affecting other people or the environment. So I, I kind of liked her like way of looking at it less like, oh my God, we're like, we've had a lot of benefits from these dark ages, right? Like now I have a computer so that I can more connect and understand what's happening to other people in the, the rest of the world and share that and connect with you too. What I said earlier about um, it's really time for the people to come together and design a system and experience that system while the government is, uh, you know, doing their best to restore and really kind of painting the picture for us of how we don't really need to restore what we had. We need to create something new. Trump is actually the greatest thing to happen to America and the world, because while the artists and communities are gathering to create something new, he's there explaining step-by-step step of why the old system doesn't work, really. And everybody, it's so clear that it's off. And it's so clear that it's off on that government leadership basis. And it's so beautiful, the metaphor of the wall. It's like, we're gonna create a wall. That's what we need to do. And that's like his biggest promise to America is like, we need to create a wall. And 
that's how the world has been operating. It's this thing about sharing and this mentality of like, okay, well, there's two of us. So we have this land to share. So let's take the land and we'll cut it in half and you go there and I'll go here and uh, this is mine. So I have total reign, sovereign reign over this land. I won't tell you how to run your land, but you know, if you're going to come over to my land, this is my land. And, and I will tell you how to run your land. <laughs> and we can't function that way. We can't create that way because if I know how to go in and grow food and you know how to prepare food, what good does it do if you don't have, if you don't know how to grow food? We need to interlace everything. We need to interlace our humanity because if these people are just really good at, like if there's such harsh borders, intelligence doesn't flow. And so these people don't get to have the benefits and these people don't get to have the benefits. And we're going to create this off balance of, of how we're relating in our communities. And that's why capitalism is so hard because we're trying to like base value on exchange, but some things you can't, you can't just put a number to, you know, some things are just based in love and there's no way to, you know, you can't put a price on a hug but it's really fucking valuable, really fucking valuable. And we know that more than ever now. You can't, six feet apart, you have to stand. That human connection is so important and that the love of ourselves, of our communities is so important and that should be the basis of our economy. That should be the basis of, of how we choose to organize and order ourselves. And we can't operate on this experience of like money equals value, love equals value. And we can't create walls. We can't create walls in our communities and we can't create walls in ourselves. Otherwise, you live this experience, you go to work to make money so that you can come home to live your life. And that's not fair. Because I want to just live my life and live my passion, and I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to segregate my masculine and feminine to be slaving away half my life, so I can live half of my life in the way that I want to. I should be able to live my life integrated with my passion and my heart and my community, and be accepted as everything that I am and be supported as everything that I am. And we have the opportunity now to take down, to see those borders and to, to look at each other on, a, on an even playing field and know how we can actually come together and share our love in an integrated, interlaced hug of humanity and love. Mm -hmm. it's so nice to feel like your passion it felt really real and it's really time for this now it's really time for this now The apocalypse team, we're gonna tell you it's straight in this wacky way because it's all crazy anyway. So let's transform it, mix it up. <laughs> Definitely need the soundtrack coming in there. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we're probably coming to close to an hour or maybe over probably talk all day, but I guess we should bring this to a close. Um, I greatly enjoyed uh, hearing from you and uh, speaking with you. And perhaps there are maybe a few people out there who uh, identify with what we're saying about the apocalypse and who we are and where we're going as a species. And uh, would you like to have any last words to anyone?
I think that it is very important for us all to breathe. I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking your time. We seem like a lot of wild, strange people, but the trickster is always the one that actually knows about what's going on amongst the nobility. And the people. Thanks for joining us and creating this friendship with us. And I'm excited to learn how to love with everybody again. I love you. All right. Goodbye to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. And uh, from the Apocalypse Committee, uh, as you see, we have much love for everyone out there and for ourselves and for our committee. And we will see you next week. press the button right